Hey everybody, so today we're going to be doing something pretty awesome. We're going to be trying to install and see how Rust Desk works on the Raspberry Pi 4. If you don't know, Rust Desk is basically like TeamViewer, a remote access software, except that it is free and open source for everything. TeamViewer has a tendency that if they think you're using it for commercial purposes, even if you're not, that will literally just end your session. I have used TeamViewer once when I was outside of the country and I had my laptop set up and they literally disconnected me because they thought I was using it for commercial purposes. So now I've been using Rust Desk on all of my devices except for the Raspberry Pi 4 and I actually want to see how well it works with this device. Now as we're getting started you need to understand there's three drawbacks from running Rust Desk on the Raspberry Pi as of making this video right now. The biggest one right now is that it does not support 64-bit ARM systems. Now, the Raspberry Pi 4 has a 64-bit CPU, but the actual software itself can't be 64-bit. So you will have to install the Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit version. Uh, if you know anything about computers, right now the 64-bit is a little bit faster than the 32-bit for Raspberry Pi, but most of the applications are in 32-bit anyways. So I don't know how to feel about this. And that is the major drawback. I wanna see how this performs on a 32-bit system. Now, the second part is that it does not support Wayland. So the software that you need to be running for this device has to be running x11 or x.org server for your display instead of Wayland. There's another drawback, unfortunately. Um, it does not really work if you're if you don't have a display connected via the hdmi as of right now i was looking through the github and it does not look like that is a feature they're going to be supporting anytime soon so if your raspberry pi 4 is not connected to a monitor it will not work uh, you will not be able to get an image from rust desk and that's really unfortunate because most of the people they may want to run this device and not have it hooked up to a monitor, you know, in some corner or even in the basement like I do sometimes. Anyways, let's see how it performs. All right, so this is the Rust Desk website. In order to download the software, you need to scroll down to where these bubbles exist. As of right now, you see every major platform is supported. If you're running Linux, um, you need to use X11, like I mentioned before. And the cool thing is that you can just turn it off. You don't like if you're using a GNOME desktop, which defaults to Wayland now, you can literally just add a command line and it will switch to x.org. So it's not that much of a problem. So obviously the Raspberry Pi circle isn't here. So we're going to click on the three dots, which will take us to the GitHub repo. And all we need to do is find the Raspberry Pi image. So these are the assets of the release. And the Raspberry Pi is right here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. So this one right here, ARM HF denotes a 32-bit uh, image. So obviously I don't see an AMD 64, not, sorry, an ARM 64 anywhere. So we're gonna download this one. The download began. So you can see down here, we're gonna keep. Then we just need to open a terminal. And in the terminal, we need to CD to the downloads folder because that's where the download went. So CD downloads and as you can see this is the package that it downloaded all you need to do is type sudo apt install and then dot it needs to be like dot dash rust desk what it's going to do is that it is going to install oh i don't know if you can see it right here Basically what it's going to do is just install the package using APT. All right, so it installed. Let's zoom out so we can see the desktop a little bit more. Sorry, I should be using OBS. I don't know what I'm doing, but all right, we don't need the terminal. We can even close the browser as we don't need it anymore. So now if we go in the menu options, if we go down to other, you can see Rust Desk is appearing as one of the applications. So Rust Desk is super simple. All we need to do is wherever, like if we're gonna be using our laptop to access it, we just have to provide this ID and then this password. So I have a, a funky setup. 
So this is actually going in via HDMI. This is just something that my monitor supports that I can put a screen down here for the second input. All right, so we're gonna be accessing with this program and we're gonna be accessing this. All right, so now we should be on the MacBook and we're gonna access the Raspberry Pi. So all we need to do is supply the Raspberry Pi ID, which is 1720448353. And remember that this is going to be specific to your Raspberry Pi. This is gonna be, and you can change these IDs and then we do connect and it's gonna ask us for the password. All right, so on the Raspberry Pi, you can see a session started with all my details. All we need to do is actually just apply the password. So let's see the password. Awesome, and just like that, we have access to the Raspberry Pi desktop. So I don't know how I'm going to edit this, but one side is gonna have the image for like coming through the MacBook versus the actual image that is being rendered. As you can see, it's a little bit choppy on the MacBook. Uh, let's minimize this. It's a little bit choppy, but nonetheless, it works and, it's, and it does its job. Now, I assume it's gonna be a lot faster if you're self-hosting the Rust desk back end, but this is pretty awesome to begin with. So everything's minimized. Let's see how fast we can open up a terminal and how fast we can type on it. So we're going to go to monkey type. Oh, there is definitely a delay. Monkeytype.com. And we're gonna do a quick test because I really wanna see, reject all, this is what I love about monkey type. They give you access to turning off ads and tracking. <sighs> Let's see how comfortable I feel doing this because to be honest, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. There's a little bit of lag and it's noticeable. I'm going to have to try it out with like a self-hosted solution to see if the relay server is a lot better. So let's see, person be, hmm. Yeah, this is not comfortable, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Oh, yeah, there's definitely like a half second delay as I'm typing and seeing and seeing something show up on screen. But what's weird is that it's like the, the movements, like if I move this window, it actually happens almost in real time on the Raspberry Pi. The problem is the image itself being rendered on the client, like the MacBook, that is what's being delayed, but as I'm seeing that like whatever movements I make, they're actually happening instantaneously on the Raspberry Pi. So I don't know if it's because the Raspberry Pi is not powerful enough to actually like render all the images on, in time, but Rust Desk is pretty awesome nonetheless, and I'm sure it's going to get better. So let's see if we can optimize for speed. So right now we have a balanced, let's see, uh, optimize for reaction time. So even though it says optimize for reaction, the image I'm getting back is a little bit laggy. However, like I said, like I, I'm gonna put it side by side. You can see that it is happening instantaneously on the Raspberry Pi. It just may be that the video encoding is a bit of a problem. And like I said, you need to be, your Raspberry Pi needs to be connected in order for this to work to a, uh, at least an HDMI out that is actually trying to grab an image. Let's see if I turn this off. Like for example, I'm not gonna turn off the Raspberry Pi, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just switch to my MacBook as the input. Let's see if Rustes stays up. Oh, I guess the recording stopped. Let's open it back up again and then record. Okay, so right now I'm connect like my Raspberry Pi is connected. And what's cool is that the image appears 
to have stayed. So even though I'm not actually connected, like as you can see here, there like there is no actual Raspberry Pi input, but it is connected with an HDMI that is so, uh, I don't know how to put it. Basically, it's just working if you just connect it via an HDMI. Like it is gonna continue to work. However, it is a little bit laggy. Uh, I'm, but for the Raspberry Pi, that's pretty awesome. Anyways, like, uh, I guess it works. So like I can act, I can go here and access my router. If for some reason I, I need to access my router from outside of the home, I can just connect to a device with the Rust desk and that device is gonna be on my network so I can go to my router. And see, it's asking me for the credentials. Rust desk is pretty awesome, however, I'm still a little bit torn. I don't really recommend it for you to be used on the Raspberry Pi because it's just not there yet. I'm sure when they switch to Rust, it's going to be a lot faster in terms of the desktop UI. I don't know about the image transmission back and forth. Anyway, guys, this has been Rust Desk. Hey, guys. So there is something I was actually forgetting. I want to see what how many resources are being used by Rust Desk. So we're just gonna open up HTOP. Yeah, it's still laggy, but like I said, on the actual Raspberry Pi, all of these commands, like the mouse and the input, is happening almost instantaneously. It feels like I'm actually typing directly on the Raspberry Pi. However, what's being delayed is the uh, is the image. And if we take a look, you know, it's using a lot of CPU cores just for this session. Like just for Rust Desk, it's using almost 50% of the resources available to it. In, and it's hovering about 1.1 gigs. And remember, this has nothing else installed. This is literally the default installation plus Rust Desk. I don't have any Docker containers running. I don't have any services, any projects. So using Rust Desk takes about I would say about 50% of your resources. However, when you stop it, everything goes back to normal. If you disconnect right now, all of this is gonna like go back to very minimal usage. So like I said, Rust Desk right now for the Raspberry Pi is not as good as it can be because they're rewriting everything because the technology they use for the desktop version of Rust Desk doesn't actually support ARM64. So maybe when ARM64 is supported, which is coming, we just don't know when. Once that happens, it's going to be a, a lot more of a smoother experience. But my my personal recommendation is if you're using the Raspberry Pi, it's just to use the terminal. However, this is also a great option because you don't have to worry about port forwarding. This will work anywhere in the world. You don't have to worry about port forwarding. You don't have to worry about signing up with like no IP or NGROC. This will literally just work whether you're using your own network or you're at Starbucks and you'll have access to it. But it's better if you have another device that is just not the Raspberry Pi.